Hey everyone, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha and today I'm going to be talking about some of the books that I have hauled over the past month or a month and a half. Alright, so today I have a stack of books that I have accumulated over the past month or month and a half and these are books that I have either gotten myself, gotten while I was in a bookstore, won in a giveaway, or received ARCs. And so I'm going to go through some of these with you today. And I'm also planning to do an unhaul video as well. I have not unhauled any books in quite some time. And I do believe that I am collecting more than I need to. Um, just as far as like, I'm not reading as quick as I'm getting books. And I've tried really hard the past couple of months, especially to not purchase any more books until I read some more. And this is a busy season for me, so I'm not really reading a lot of books right now. But I decided to unhaul some that I either am not really interested in anymore or that I have read and either didn't enjoy or I didn't enjoy enough to keep. So those are going to be in my next video, but today, once again, we're going to talk about some books that I'm going to be hauling, so let's just go ahead and get started. The first book I have is Book Nerd by Holly McGuire, and I am really excited about this one. This is a beautiful edition of this book. Um, Holly is actually, I don't know if she's on Instagram or not. I actually need to check it out and see if she is, but she is a freelance illustrator based in Bristol, UK, and she has worked with um, people like Bowden, HP, Birchbox, Vivetta, Little Brown Books, and she's created clothing, um, board games, stationery, different stuff like that. So you might recognize some of her artwork in this, but I actually won this in a giveaway and I think this would make a great coffee table book. I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and flip through a little bit so you can kind of see what's in here. But this is just called Book Nerd and it's adorable. I don't really have much to say about it except that I love this book. Um, and there are so many cute illustrations throughout. I love this. It says book merch and I have to point out that there's actually like book underwear right here. I think that's super cute and funny. Um, but yeah, there's just all kinds of different things. I love this walk-in closet and I just think this is a beautiful book and I'm really excited to have it. It came with some bookmarks in the back that are absolutely gorgeous. And I haven't taken them out yet because it's going to bother me to take them out. But I'm really excited to have them and use them. And I'm really excited to have this book. I have already read through it and flipped through it. So I guess I can go ahead and mark it as read on Goodreads. I have not done that yet. But I'm really excited to have this. Like I said, this is like the perfect coffee table book. So if you are a book nerd or a book lover, I think you should definitely check this one out. Next up, I have four books that I actually received at my library. We get um, some boxes of ARCs from School Library Journal every now and then. And this really helps me out as a librarian, first of all, just because sometimes I don't hear about some of these books. I do hear about a lot being on Instagram and on YouTube and immersed in the online book community. And also from my job, just doing different webinars and book previews with different publishing companies. But sometimes there are things that come out that I miss. And so I really like getting ARCs from School Library Journal. And there are four books in this box that I particularly would like to highlight because I'm really excited about them. So the first one is One Kid's Trash by Jamie Sumner. And Jamie Sumner also wrote Roll With It, if you are familiar with that book. I have not had a chance to read that one, um, but I do know what that book is. So this one follows a boy named Hugo, Wizard of Waste. It says, Hugo is not happy about moving halfway across Colorado just because his dad had a midlife, midlife crisis and decided to become a ski instructor. It'd be different if Hugo wasn't so tiny, if girls didn't think he was adorable, like a puppy, and guys didn't call him Leprechaun, or worse. The bullying was bad enough at his old school. Hugo hopes it won't be worse at his new one. At least he has his cousin, VJ to show him the ropes. Vij is effortless, effortless, <laughs> effortlessly, that's a hard word to say, cool. Something, something Hugo only dreams of being. Then the other students discover Hugo's remarkable talent for garbology, the science of studying a person's trash to uncover their deepest wishes and secrets. Suddenly he is the cool kid for the first time in his life, but what happens when it all goes to his head? I thought that sounded like a really good book and this was on my radar before School Library Journal sent this, so when it was in there, it made me extra excited to pick it up. I'm really excited to read this one and also share this with the kids at my library. Um, the chapter headers have some illustrations on it that I think are really cute. I mean, it's essentially just garbage, but I love illustrations regardless. 
And so I'm excited about this because I feel like it's going to resonate with some kids in school who are bullied. And I think it's really interesting that Hugo is going to like have garbology as part of his um, skill set, I guess. And so I think that's going to make for a really cool premise um, amidst all of this stuff that teens, or not teens, but well, I guess teens too, honestly, go through every day with bullies and stuff like that. So I'm really excited to pick this one up. And then I also have um, Once Upon a Camel by Kathy Apelt. I believe that's how you pronounce that. And the pictures are by Eric Roman. When I first saw this, I thought it was by Katherine Applegate because Kathy Apelt and Katherine Applegate kind of look similar. And this just honestly reminded me of the one and only Ivan when I saw this. So this is also an advanced reader's copy and I think this is gonna be a really cute book. So this one is about Zeta. Zeta is an achy old camel with a treasure trove of stories to tell. She's won camel races for the Royal pa Pasha, Pasha of Smyrna, crossed trash, I'm gonna have trouble talking today, guys. Crossed treacherous oceans to new lands, led army missions with her best camel friend by her side and outsmarted a far too pompous mountain lion. But these stories were before. Now Zeta wanders the desert as the last camel in Texas. She's not, however, alone. Two tiny kestrel chicks nestled in the fluff of fur between her ears Clee killy cleaning for their missing parents, and a dust storm the size of a mountain are taking Zeta on one more grand adventure, and it could lead to Zeta's most brilliant story yet. So once again, I just thought that sounded adorable, and I'm not really sure why, but it kind of reminded me of the one and only Ivan, I guess just because it's an animal story. Um, the chapter headers are absolutely gorgeous. The illustrations in this book are just beautiful, and I'm really excited to check this one out and share this with my kiddos at the library. Um, but yeah, this just looks amazing. And I'm really excited to read an animal story that is very likely to tug at my heartstrings. Um, after that, I also have same from School Library Journal, The OK Witch and the Hungry Shadow. And you guys have no idea, well, you might, if you know how much I love The OK Witch book one, how excited I was to get this in our ARC box because I have been really looking forward to reading this book. It comes out in July. And I'm reading this early. So the one thing I don't like about graphic novel arcs is that some parts are in color, but most of the book is in black and white. However, I'm way too excited about this to wait until July to read it. So I'm going to go ahead and read it and then I'll buy the full color copy in July. I do understand why there would not be a waste of ink for an arc copy to print it in all color, but I still wish it was in full color. But anyways, I'm still really excited about this. If you have not checked out The OK Witch, I highly recommend it. It is about this girl. I think I actually already told y'all about this in my TBR because I think this might've been on my list. But if you missed that video, this is about a girl named Moth and Moth loves all things witchy and wants to be a witch. And she ends up finding out that she is part of a lineage of witches. And there are things in the first book that just reminded me of Halloween Town or like the Salem Witch Trials and just different aspects of things that I love. And so I adored The OK Witch. Um, Emma Stein Kellner is a great author and illustrator and I highly recommend you check out The OK Witch if you have not already. I'm really excited to jump back in to Life with Moth and um, in The OK Witch and The Hungry Shadow. So I'm excited to read this one hopefully this month. And then the last book I got in the School Library Journal box is the Great Ghost Hoax by Emily Ecton um, and art by David Motram. This is the second book um, in this. I don't know if it's a series. I'm not sure that you have to read these. I'm not, I, I'm not sure. So keep in mind, I said I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you have to read these um, in order or not, but I'm planning on it because I ordered the first book, which is The Great Pet Heist for our library. And so we've got that in. I'm probably going to read that one first and then read The Great Ghost Hoax. But this is starring um, a dachshund named Butterbean, which is like immediately sold me because I have a miniature dachshund and I love her and anything with a dachshund, I'm just going to be attached to at this point. And there's a cat. I can't remember all their names now. It was on the cover, which is way too small for me to see here, um, but it was on the cover of the first book. I think the mice, oh, I can't even remember, are like Marco and Polo, but I can't remember the cat's name or anything else or the bird. But this one, it looks like they are getting into some ghosty stuff, which I love like Halloween, spooky, witchy, like not too scary, but that kind of uh, of a read anyways. And so it says Butterbean is bored. She and the other pets pulled off a heist once, but that seems like a million years ago. So that's referring to the first book that I need to read before this one, or I'd like to anyways. Um, nothing exciting has happened since then. That is until Mrs. Third Floor's rental unit starts showing signs of a ghost. 
eerie noises, objects moving when no one is there, fish disappearing from the tank overnight. The pets decide to investigate and soon they're confronted with an even bigger problem, professional ghost hunters who are offering to drive out the spirits for a hefty fee. It's up to Butterbean and the rest of the gang to save the day. Can they uncover the truth in time? So that just made me super excited. I had not heard of the authors, illustrators, these books before this. So this is just a reason why I'm super thankful for School Library Journal and them sending us ARCs at the library because I just might not have ever heard about this. So I'm really excited to check out this series. There are illustrations inside, um, which is always great. I wish more adult books had illustrations because I just love having pictures in books. For some reason, it just makes for an even better reading experience. So I'm really excited to have this in my hands. And that is all I got from School Library Journal. So let's move on to the rest of the stack. I can't remember if I have hauled this yet, but this is The Bicycle Spa by Yona Zeldis McDonough. I know I talked about this in my TBR video because I'm reading this with the book club at my library, the middle grade book club that I host. And I've already read this, thank goodness, because the past couple of months I have waited till the last minute to read um, our book club picks and it's not been good. So I've already read this one. I thought it was good. I will review it in my end of the month wrap up. But this is about a boy named Marcel and Marcel loves riding his bicycle. He is fascinated with the Tour de France and um, he was really excited about going this year, but it is 1940 and, well actually it's 1942. This all started in 1940. This is amidst World War II and the German occupation of France. And so the Tour de France has been canceled, but Marcel still rides his bike and he ends up delivering bread back and forth between um, his parents and different people in the town and he finds out that there is actually a secret going on um, as to why he's delivering this bread and he becomes kind of like the bicycle spa um he finds out that his parents i don't want to say this but like it's kind of obvious are part of the resistance and that he is helping them and there's a new girl in town he finds out some secrets about her and i think this is a really good introduction for middle grade kids about World War II, this, and then also Number the Stars by Lois Lowry, which I have right here. I think both of these are great introductions. This one is set in 1943 and follows Anne-Marie Johansson in Copenhagen, and um, she has a friend that they end up hiding in their house. She's Jewish. Um, so both of these, I think, are great introductions into World War II for um, younger kids because they're not too harsh, but there is enough in there to kind of let them know what's going on So I'm not gonna put that back right now because that will be way too hard I do recommend this though. I think it's great for younger kids And so I did haul that for book club and then next month during our summer reading program We are going to have a roaring readers book club and we're reading GI dogs hero pup of World War one Sergeant Stubby this is by Laurie Kalkoven and I'm really excited to read this because it's about a dog that helped out in the war and it sounds like a great story. I'll go ahead and read the back for those of you who may be curious. It's based on the heroic true story of a stray pup who goes to war. Let's see, it says, a dense fog covered the battlefield. When it lifted for a moment, I noticed a man wandering around in a gray uniform, enemy colors. A low growl rose in my throat as I moved toward him. He could only be trouble and I wasn't going to let him get near my guys. So that is Sergeant Stubby talking. Meet Stubby. He's a stray bull terrier from Connecticut who was adopted by a group of soldiers and whisked off to the front lines of World War I. While the men think Stubby is just there to lift their spirits, he ends up saving them time and again from poison gas attacks and German spies, eventually being promoted to the rank of sergeant. Join Stubby and his pals as they make their way across Europe fighting to defeat the enemy and win the war. So, this is the book that we're reading for summer reading um, for the Middle Grade Book Club that I host at the library, except I'm calling it something different for summer, so hopefully more people will be interested. But this also has some pictures in the back of the real Sergeant Stubby and tells different things about what he did to help out in World War I. So I'm really excited about this one. And along the same lines of book club, I can't remember if I've hauled this, but you've probably seen this already in my TBR and my wrap up from last month, but this is I Cosmo by Carly Sorosiak, and we read this for book club last month. And I really enjoyed it, and I think everybody should pick this one up. It's a great family book. It deals with some hard topics like divorce and things like that, but um, it's about this 13-year-old golden retriever named Cosmo, and it's told from his perspective, and he is the dog to Max and Emmeline and their parents, 
and Max starts to notice that his parents are arguing quite a bit more lately and he decides to enter Max in a competition, a dance competition, to see if they can win the competition and be on a on television, I think in a movie, and see if that will show their family the importance of them being together. And so that is kind of what this book is about. And I love Carly Sorosiak's writing. I think it's really immersive and really good. And I loved this story. It was both heartwarming, heart-wrenching, and here comes Jovi. <laughs> hi, baby. Would you like to say hi to the people? <laughs> Hello, people. And there's, there's my husband also. So hold on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Anyways, so I don't remember what I was saying, but um, it's heartwarming, heart-wrenching, and also funny because Cosmo does not understand human things very much. So it's really sweet. I recommend it. Um, Carly Sorosiak has another book that's out called Leonard, My Life is a Cat. And I really want to read that one. I really want to get my hands on it. It's about this alien that comes to Earth, is supposed to come to Earth as a human and complete this mission, but he accidentally, something goes wrong and he comes to Earth as a cat and gets adopted, because he's a stray, just out walking around, by this little girl named Olive, I believe, and he starts to kind of warm up to being a cat, and I really want to read that book. So, I love Carly Sorosiak right now, and I will sit here and hype her up all day, because I think she is a phenomenal writer, and I can't believe it took me this long to pick up one of her books. Then I also, today, actually, I, so backing up just a little bit, I did not plan to film today, which is why I'm in my workout clothes, but um, I actually went shopping with my husband, trying to find some new clothes, which was not successful, um, and then we went on a walk, and it was really fun, and I was like, well, I've still got some daylight, so I'm going to try to film, but when I was out, I went to the bookstore, and I picked up Witch Hat Atelier Volume 6, because I have the first five volumes, I've read the first three, and I kind of want to keep them as I'm reading them. So um, I don't think the seventh book is out yet. And if it is, my bookstore didn't have it. But I got the sixth book and I'm really excited to continue the series. I've talked about it quite a bit on my channel. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. But if you like witches and manga, um, I think this is a really good place to start. If you've never even picked up manga before, I think you would really enjoy this. So that is Witch Hat Adelier Volume 6. And then I also picked up... This was not today, but I also just picked up a couple of graphic novels. So I have Guts by Raina Telgemeier, which I read, I believe, last month, and I really enjoyed it. So I have now officially read all of the books in the series. Um, the first one is Smile, the second one is Sisters, and this one is Guts, and I think Guts is my favorite out of all of them, and it is about um, this girl, well, it's about Raina, because all of these are kind of memoirs of Raina Telgemeier's life, and this is about... Um, Raina essentially getting kind of stressed out and having an upset stomach and having stomach problems because of different stresses in her life. And I just felt like that was extremely relatable. And so I wanted to own this book. And so I got it um, since it's my favorite of three. You don't have to read the books in order. I read Smile, then I read Guts, then I read Sisters. But they're all just kind of following Raina and her family. Um, but anyways, the art in this is absolutely gorgeous. I love the illustration style and... So yeah, this is Guts. And then I also got Roller Girl by Victoria Jameson because I read this a couple of years ago and I really enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite graphic novels. I think it's phenomenal. Um, I think all of these books are phenomenal apparently because I think I've said that a couple of times. But I love the artwork in this one as well. And because it's been a couple of years since I read it, I do want to give it a reread. But if you also, once again, are looking for some good graphic novels, these past couple I have read and I've really enjoyed them. And this one has a Newbery Honor Award on it. So highly recommend. And then also I got The Witches, um, which is by Roald Dahl, but this is adapted by Penelope Bajo. I'm not quite sure how to say that, um, but this is a graphic novel adaptation, or not adaptation, but edition? I don't even know what I'm trying to say of The Witches. So I have The Witches and I have not read The Witches. But I watched the movie, like the original movie with Angelica Houston that came out years ago and terrified me as a child, quite frankly. But I really want to read all of Roald Dahl's books, or maybe not all of them, but quite a few of his popular ones. And I went ahead and picked this up just because it looked interesting and I thought maybe I could read um, The Witches and then read this one right after it. So I'm excited to have this one. And then I've got three, four more books left. So, I've got The Ghouls of Halfair by Nick Tomlinson, and I cannot remember. I think 
It was either Lexi from Alexandra Roslin or Belle from Belle's Middle Grade that talked about this. It may have been both of them because honestly, I've seen this a few different places, but it says the scariest legends are about to come true. And I don't really remember what this is about, but I like ghost stories and I like spooky stories and fall. And so I wanted to pick this one up. It was like $3 on Amazon. So you can't beat a deal like that. I had to get it. Uh, it says, young historian Molly Thompson suspects that the creepy legends of Halfair are starting to come true. But when her mother bans her from doing any further research, Molly and her friends become covert monster hunters in order to save their town. Someone is secretly trying to summon Halfair's mythical monsters, and with the election of a new mayor looming, everything and everyone is becoming increasingly suspicious. A brilliant and funny, a brilliantly funny and spooky mystery adventure from a fresh new voice in children's books. So this must be Nick Tomlinson's debut so i'm really excited to read this one i don't think there are any illustrations in here it doesn't look like it but nonetheless i'm really excited to pick this one up and then i also have skeleton tree by kim ventrella i think i might have seen this or bone hollow or both from bell's middle grade also um but then again it also could have been mindy from pocket full of whimsy if you like middle grade and you are not following um from instagram bell's middle grade or mindy from pocket full of whimsy i highly recommend following them because they always post really good recommendations for middle grade and then also lexi um, from alexander roslin jade from jd ray reads and gavin from how to train your gavin on youtube they have great middle grade recommendations but this book came recommended by one or most of those people. Um, I never can remember where I get these recommendations from because I see them different places. But this book looked really interesting. Um, I'm going to read the back of this one too just because I think it has a really good synopsis and I don't really remember how to explain this. So here we go. There are lots of things that grow in backyards. Bones aren't one of them. 12-year-old Stanley knows the bone growing in his yard is a little weird, but that's okay because now he'll have the perfect photo to submit to the Young Discoverers competition. With such a unique find, he's sure to win the grand prize. But oddly, the bone doesn't appear in any photos. Even stranger, it seems to be growing into a full skeleton, one that only children can see. There's just one person who doesn't find any of this weird, Stanley's little sister. Mischievous Myron, or Mirren, it's M-I-R-E-N. You let me know how you think that's pronounced in the comments. Myron or Mirren um, adopts the skeleton as a friend and soon the two become inseparable playmates. When Mirren, I'm gonna go with Mirren, starts to grow sick, Stanley suspects that the skeleton is responsible and does everything in his power to drive the creature away. However, Mirren is desperate not to lose her friend, forcing Stanley to question everything he's ever believed about life, love, and the mysterious forces that connect us. So that sounds really interesting. And also, if you don't already know this about this book, and I'm probably not going to have a good way to show you guys this, so we'll see. Um, it's got like a little, uh, you probably can't see that. I don't know how to make sure you're seeing it, but it's like a little like flip book of the skeleton. I hope you guys can see that because I can't tell where I'm at. I don't have like a viewfinder. I'm filming on my phone, but there are little skeletons at the bottom of each page. And if you flip them fast, it's like the little like flip books and the skeletons waving. So I just thought that was super cute. It's a great um, addition to this already interesting sounding book and it's really cute. The illustrations are like cute and creepy. Whimsical maybe is the right word. So I'm really excited about that one. And then the last two I have are The Truth As Told by Mason Buttle by Leslie Connor. This has a um, Schneider Family Book Award on it and National Book Award finalist. And so this book is about a boy named Mason Buttle. He is the biggest sweatiest kid in his grade and everybody knows he can barely read or write but his learning disabilities are compounded by grief because 15 months ago his best friend um turned up dead in the buttle family's orchard and there's an investigation that keeps dragging on mason can't understand why the lieutenant won't believe the story that mason told him so mason ends up making a new friend at school named calvin chumsky who's already or who's also relentlessly bullied by the other boys in their neighborhood and then calvin goes missing um, so Mason finds himself in trouble again, and he is desperate to figure out what happened to Calvin and eventually Benny, but will anyone believe him? So this sounds like it's going to be like heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, maybe heartwarming at some point. I don't know, but also there's a mystery. And so I'm really intrigued by this one and I really would like to read this one soon, but we'll see if I get around to it. And then the last book just honestly like reminded me of the movie Rio. I don't know if you guys have seen Rio, but when I looked at this cover, I was like, oh, this reminds me of Rio. 
um, which is actually kind of sad because I'm pretty sure that movie, they're about the blue macaws, and I'm pretty sure the blue macaws have now officially gone extinct, which really sucks because they are beautiful birds. Um, these are not blue macaws, um, but they look like some kind of macaws or parrots. I'm not good with my birds, but, oh, actually, it's an African gray. There we go. This is called The Simple Art of Flying by Corey Leonardo, and it is about um, a bird named Alistair the African Grey Parrot, and he was born in a pet store and dreams of escaping to bluer skies. He liked nothing more than to fly away to a palm tree with his beloved sister, Aggie, but when Aggie's purchased by 12-year-old Fritz and Alistair is adopted by elderly dance enthusiast and pie baker, Albertina Plopke, the future looks ready to crash land. In between anxiously plucking his feathers, eating a few books, and finding his own poetic voice, Alistair plots his way to a family reunion. But soon he's forced to choose between the life he's always dreamed of and admitting the truth. But sometimes the bravest adventure is in letting go. So, this just sounded like a really cute book. And the honestly, the cover is kind of, this was definitely a cover buy. The cover sold me on this. And I had purchased some books for my library summer reading program to kind of like donate for prizes and this was one that I picked up because the cover was just really beautiful and it had animals on it and our team is our team our theme is tales and tales for our summer reading program so like animal tales and then like story tales or fairy tales and so I picked this up and then when it came in like I spent my own money on it and this is the same with this one I just had to keep these two I couldn't I couldn't do it I just had to keep them because I wanted them for myself spent my own money on it so it's okay but I had to keep it and this one is Definitely, like I said, a cover by, but I also think it sounds like a really sweet story. All right, y'all, that is all of the books in my haul for today. Be on the lookout for a book unhaul. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to film that today or not because I might lose some of my lighting, but we shall see. And if you see that video in the same outfit that I'm wearing whenever I post it, then that probably means I'll film it today. But if not, you can be looking forward to that coming up hopefully in the next week. Um, but anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this book haul. Let me know if you have read any of these books and if you enjoyed them or if you didn't, just kind of let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. So thank you guys for watching. If you don't mind, if you liked this video, go ahead and hit the like button down below. And if you would like to see more videos from me, you can hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications anytime I post a new video. Thank you all for tuning in and stopping by and I will see you in my next video. Bye.